Hey everybody, Mike Day here. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. So we showed up here today on this job expecting to be able to back the concrete truck right up to the pads we were doing and come to find out the top of the soil here was just loose enough so we couldn't get him up there. He was, his tires were just spinning, spinning, spinning. So luckily, luckily we had a good relationship with uh, the excavator contractor there and he offered to help us out in you know without him today we wouldn't have been able to get these done so uh, this ended up making the job really easy to pour even though it did take quite a bit longer to get it done at least at least we got the concrete back there so we got three pads to do here today make sure you know I'll show you the third one the third one was even further away than these two but you can see how slimy and slippery that surface was right there it's just the Sun was out just enough to loosen up that stuff and keep it from being just frozen really hard. Now we had the pads covered with blankets, so there was no frost under the pads. We were good there, but we thought, you know, from we came up and formed these up the day before, and it was really really cold. But we really thought we'd be able to back right up to these these things, dump them right out quick. So <clears throat> by the by the time we get to this third pad, you'll see coming up. I mean the concrete's setting up pretty good. It's it's got hot water in it. It's got accelerator in it. I mean we gotta we gotta make sure this stuff sets up good enough so we can cover it after and we get a good finish on it too. So we, we really pounded the accelerator to it. You can see we we poured it fairly dry with that slump right there. That's not too too wet. I'd say that's probably about a five slump right there and it's drying up fast on us so we're uh, with just three of us you know we're moving as fast as we can even though I know for me personally my fingers are probably froze right now grabbing onto that cold screed even the, the cold goes right through my gloves But without the excavator guy offering to help, I mean, he was busy. He's working on the same job site, but but it's a little bit further away, and they're they're digging up the the driveway, putting in a new uh, parking lot and all that stuff. So we ran over and I just asked him if if he wouldn't mind helping us out here for a little bit, and he said, "Sure, no problems." But so this probably took up by the time we got done I mean at least an hour of his time if not maybe a little bit more really I mean you can only go so fast when you're dumping a little bit of concrete into that bucket it wasn't the biggest bucket either on that excavator so probably what about three wheelbarrows or so would fit in there so by the time he gets down to the truck the truck loads the bucket, he turns and comes back, dumps it in the pad, you know. Here we are on the third pad. You can kind of see from the tracks left by the excavator there just how greasy and muddy that was on top. We didn't dare back the truck up any more than that <laughs> right there because we didn't want to get him stuck. Even though we probably could have pulled him out with the excavator, it just, it just would have made a mess. So we ended up just dumping it bucket by bucket. In between buckets, you know, we're pulling that wire up. We really didn't want to get too close to the bucket as he's dumping. We don't, definitely didn't want to get hit by that. So you can see we're just sitting there kind of waiting, watching, which is, that's definitely not what we're used to doing when we're pouring concrete. I'm going to show you how we finish this one too right here, so hang out for that. That'll be coming right up in a minute. But, you know, let me know, know down in the comments, you guys... You live in uh, climates like us, like uh, this is about December. It starts getting really cold. We start getting snow in December. And then it lasts through at least March, sometimes into early April. I mean, when you guys pour on outside, do you have any trouble like this? Um, you know, not being able to reach your project? I mean, if we'd known in advance we wasn't going to be able to get back to these things, we would have done a couple things we would have either called for the conveyor truck we would have got a pump truck and I guess we could have even brought some of those they do make these these big uh, really hard rubber mats you could lay down we could have backed him across those mats to get him up to this 
but without the excavator, I mean, it would have been it would have been game over <laughs> for us. We would have been sending him back and not getting these done today. Now at this point, you know, we're probably we're getting close to an hour into this now with that Crete just sitting in that truck with that hot water in it just kind of setting up. We didn't really want to just keep giving him water, you know, keep giving him drinks. That'll just weaken the concrete. So we had to kind of push through it and just deal with it, get it down as quick as we could because we know that we're going to have to jump right back on the finishing based on how how much the slump is drying up on us right here. Now those other two pads we just did are in the shade, so that's and we're not quite as much of a rush to get back on those, but this one here, this one we can just tell by screed and it's gonna set up really quick on us. Thank God the truck driver was really patient. Paul back there. He uh you know we probably expected to be out of here in at least half the time. We don't want to dump too much here. Either. We don't want to make a big mess on the outside of this pad. So the excavator guy, he was really patient too for us, just waiting, even though he had another job to get back to. It's it's good just to be kind and friendly to the, your other subs. You just you never really know when you're going to need a hand sometimes, you know, and it goes both ways. So we try to have a good relationship with everybody we're working with. Most everybody's pretty friendly anyway. They'll they'll go out of your way to help you if you ask. That's what we find anyway where we're from. We generally don't have too much trouble with with guys that are impatient, guys that are just stubborn, guys that just don't really care about you. Most everybody generally helps each other. Makes it good to work that way. Using my little DeWalt pencil vibrator on this one because those edges are gonna all be exposed after. They're gonna set some type of, I think they're gonna set some type of uh, like like stadium seating on this so they can do events in this field eventually. There you can see, look at Luke run this bull float down and back. It's barely even doing anything. <laughs> he had to go over and over and over it multiple times to get this smooth, but he finally did. And then once he got it smooth, you know, we went up and washed tools up, and then we jumped right back on this thing. We're going to cut a joint in each one of these three pads the same way right here, one right down the middle, just cut them in half. That'll help do a couple things. It will should help with the cracking, number one. And it just breaks it up, makes it look a little bit better. I'm working on getting the mag floating done. Darren's cutting in the edges with the edger. Because this thing's getting real close to brooming. Luke's using a Darby there. He's reaching out. Luckily, we could reach out across this thing with that Darby, and we didn't have to jump on it with uh, knee pads and, and mag it out. So what we'll do is we'll run the broom over it like this and take a look at the broom marks. If we like them, if we think they're, they look good, if they're fine enough, we don't want to get them too rough or anything like that, then we'll just keep going. If not, we would stop. We'd float those broom marks back out and just wait a little bit. But this one seemed really, really nice. So we could go right to town on this one and then get back over there on those other ones in the shade. We'll end up redoing the tool marks on these two and kind of picture frame this out. That's what they wanted. Once you do a few passes with the broom the paste that's building up in the bristles so and it just starts leaving some like funny what we call them little concrete balls or concrete snots on the surface and I really don't like that look so we'll just rinse the paste out of those bristles and then we'll get as much water as possible out of there and then we'll just keep going and then your broom box look really nice neat and clean that way We're working right on that river. That's called the Kennebec River, really close to the mouth of the ocean. It was it was kind of windy here today and definitely very cool. So it made working it made working a little a little tricky first thing in the morning. 
that's leaving a really really nice broom finish on it for us today and then Darren's coming around he's picture framing the edges and then I'm putting the finished tool mark in right there with the what we call a groover or a joiner and then that's that's how we poured and finished these things I mean it was saved by the excavator really these were the other two pads we got done so let me know if you guys ever need any extra help on your jobs like this and if you ask for it if if you're co-subs are are more than happy to help you or if you don't get much help let me know down in the comments thanks again for watching guys we'll see you on the next one